The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hi, folks. Basil Trappin singing for Steve Rhodes. Steve uh, sent a message to Allah Engineer to say he wasn't feeling that good. So I'm I'm here and I'm, I'm preparing for my webinar coming up on Tuesday at 4 o'clock, 4 to 5.30. It's right here. Let me just show you this quickly what I'm going to be working on. Sectors and stocks to focus on in this uh, next phase of the market cycle. Live Tuesday, July the 23rd, 4 to 5.30. Uh, Eastern Time archives will be included for all subscribers. This is a subscriber webinar, so you can become a subscriber. It's a money back guarantee if you're not happy. Most importantly, what we are looking at is uh, I want to see what sectors can this rotation, and I believe it's a rotation, uh, allow for. Uh, the Dow 30, are they going to be able to keep moving to the upside? Uh, have, have we rotated to a certain, is there a certain part of the Dow? What's working, what's not working? I've got a bunch of low price stocks. I've got a bunch of real uh, what uh, you know, triple digit stocks. Doesn't matter what it is, whatever is working. The other thing is we want to look at the sectors, stocks in particular, and can the out of favor big losers become winners? For instance, let me just go to this right now. Let me go to the daily chart. Uh, of there we are. So look, look, Shopify. I mean, this is a, this was a fantastic winner going to the high of 2021 in November. It goes to 176.29. Actually, it was way more than that because it had a split. I don't remember if it was a 10 for one split or a 900 for whatever it is. It went to 176.29 based on the chart that we're looking at right now. And then it went down to 23.63. Is this a pattern we just made? You mean the Chapman Wave always looking for peak Ds? You know, Steve has his automated Chapman Wave method methodology, uh, which is based on the techniques that I've uh, articulated over the years. Uh, there are a couple of little subtleties that I happen to like, so I haven't got it automated. I do everyone by hand. I mean, sometimes when they split, I have to like, uh, what happened to, what was the last one? SMCI, was that a split? Let me just see. No, uh, one of those was split. And it, oh, uh, AVGO. I, haven't, I don't know if I've even done it yet. AVGO, yeah, naked charts. I've got everything. I had everything notated. Here's your dreaded H right there. I had everything notated. I have to redo all of them charts notated. Steve's would have automatically put in peak A, B, C, Ds, where you look for other things to happen. That's where it went. That's um, AVGO's Broadcom. Anyway, let's get back to what we were looking at here. Of course, I have to look to see what was I looking at right here. Um what was that? No, that wasn't the one. This is the one right here. Shop. There you are. Shopify um, was way up. And now it, it, what What would make me look at this to say, hey, this is going to Shopify Inc. customized online store platform. What is going to get this back? Look, the nine period moving average in the monthly chart is still strong. It's weak in the in the. Uh, weekly chart only went to a peak. See, there's another way I can count that. So, this is a failure so far, but it hasn't failed by taking out the initial uh, 45 low, 44, whatever it was, low. So, it's still at 64, uh, yep, 64.12 hugging for five weeks, six weeks. It's been right on the 200 period exponential moving average. But the peak D that we just made in the daily sees a big move down below the 200 period moving average. This is an overlapping wave. Look, peak A, peak B, peak C. Then it pulls back. Back. And under that, it has a gray A, a gray B, and gray C. Why is it gray? Because it's under the previous high, which means that when you go to a D, it should go sharply to a D, an overlapping wave that, that uses the two streams of energy. And then it should give back and come back into that uh, into the rectangle. Well, lo and behold, it's spiraled up into the 70 area, 70.04. 70.04 was the high on the 16th. And a big red candle, and now another red candle today. So uh, is this uh, this is the type of thing we'll be looking at and saying, where will we get in? What does it have to do to move to the upside so that we can, in fact, treat it as a new entry 
uh, and that's going to be very important. So we've got lots of stocks like this. Um, let me see. I have, we haven't got back into AA. We haven't been there for a long time. AA keeps looking like it's going to be great. Alcoa Corporation, and yet it's a failure. So I'm looking at stocks that are pretty major names, some very, very major names, who that have had big pullback. 98.08 was the high in March of 2022, two and a half years ago. And it goes down to the 2307 level, uh, October of 2027, and had a fabulous run to the upside. But is this an alternate count? Uh, is that D? And then this is actually an E and an F slash B and a G slash C. It's made a P, G top. Or is this a C, meaning that it should go even higher? Well, those are the things we're going to be looking at because if this works and we have another big move to the upside uh, in summer or late summer into the fall, um, you would have, I feel strongly that Alcoa should be up in the lead. Look at this, General Motors. General Motors is uh, making new recovery highs as we speak. And that, that shouldn't be right. Wait a minute. Wait, what's coming to General Motors? Well, the fact is that people are saying, I don't know about this electric stuff. I, I'm, I'm really keen, but I don't want a limit on when I have to charge. And it's a damn nuisance when you go away. You have to find a place and you have to sit there for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. It's just, I don't have to do that if I've got either hybrid or I've got uh, uh, gas. So uh, I, I love the fact that the EVs are really quick and they're kind of snappy. It's I, I kind of like that myself. But at the same time, I'm not prepared to, um, I'm not prepared to wait in line to get gas when it takes me five minutes and I'm done. I got to. I got. I don't want to do that. So it's a, it's a pay a trade off. Therefore, General Motors seems to be doing very nicely. Um, General Motors, Ford. Look at Ford. Ford, a new recovery high today. So I'm. I'm saying I'm not in this camp that says, "Oh my God, crash coming." I think this is a rotational market. And if we're able to pick the right right stocks, I mean, for stock, we've got some stocks that have held extremely well gone to all-time highs, and a bunch of them in the last uh, a week or so. And I'm saying, you know what? It's time for you to have a rest. Look, AIQ. Look at that move down. We, we, we're along from the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF from way back, way back in 2023. And we've taken a little bit off. I haven't added to it because I think we're pulling back. I do want to add. Now, I have a big question in this particular one. Was that an instant restart? So that this is not a peak C at the top here. But in the meantime, I don't have to worry about that. It's got a long way to go to break 31 to, to negate this buy signal altogether. But I, it's, a, it's AIQ. And look, Microsoft, let me just talk about this now. Because if you, if you aren't used to my work, you probably might not have listened to my show. But um, here we go. Look, Microsoft. There, Microsoft is trading at 436.02. It's been AI. It's got everything. We got it uh, January the uh, October the 20 October the 30th, I believe, because it represented the Dow, the S&P, the QQQ, the XLK. That's the S&P Spider Tech Fund, and the AIQ area. Now look at it pulling back in this pattern that I call the stalk leg formation. Big pullback, 431. 433 to 431 is my downside target, initial target. We'll see if it gets there. I'll be right back. Now he's now down. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, yes, this is the Trader's Edge. Steve is fucking uh, that moment today, so I said I'll click over for this hour. We're looking at the target, the first target for Microsoft that we were looking at was this left side low. On the downside, that says 436.72. We've gone to 436.26, and we've got a little bit more to go. <clears throat> and then we'll see whether or not there is some kind of a um, uh, some kind of a base being formed. So let me just do this again. I want to do. Uh, I did this in my show. I, I'm a little bit lost. I've done it so many times today. Uh, let me just run this again. The Dow. The Dow right now is down uh, 100 points at 41.98. Made a new all-time high today. Four, oh, my. I've, oh, oh. Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Um, 41.376. I don't think I've seen this in, oh. I used to do this when I hand charted. And uh, I used to have this engineering paper. And when there was a round number closed, I used to say, oh, oh, and I'd circle it. Or if there was an unchanged like a 0% a change, the market was up uh, just a fraction, less than 1%, even much less than 1%. I call it a 0% change, and I had a whole series of techniques that went with it. But look at this, 41,376 point, zero, zero. You tell me how many times you've ever seen that, a round number, exact high. And I said... <coughs> For 38,000 was the low for the big move up, right? And it was 30,090.95, but I treated it as a round number. And then the other day we had a 40,000 exact. Oh, uh, was it 41,000? Let me just find that. Uh, let me go through this. What was the close? Close was 40,000. No, close. Oh, there it is. 41,198.41. Oh, wait a minute. What happened to it? Didn't we make a round number close the other day? Um, maybe not. Oh, it was at the last minute it moved. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the is a round number, 41,376.00, round number high in leg E. 
I think this is a high for a couple of days. I don't think this is the high. I think it's just a high for a, a momentary breather. We'll see where we close tomorrow, Friday, for that weekly chart. There's a whole bunch of analysis that I have. You'll see here on my show, the Tiger Technician's Hour. And look at this, a very quick peak C, one bar rest, peak D with one bar rest, and now leg E. Will there be a down move in August? Say that there's another bar. So you've gone peak C, one bar. Peak D, one bar. Leg E, and then maybe peak E. I don't know, but all I'm saying is this is a moment to be We've raised cash. We're looking to be buyers. That's why I wanted to put the uh, portfolio together, a potential portfolio. That's why I want you to have a webinar that starts to look very intensely using some of the, I won't spend as much time on the techniques. I've got webinars on that, but I'll discuss them. But we're looking at what could work in this next phase coming up because the semiconductors, now I said I'm going to go through the front. So the SBX is the S&P. Big red candle, first time it's under the 14-period moving average. Since it's been above the 14-period moving average, the uh, 1st of June, it went, boom, nice candle. Chapel Wave, green Roman candle, and then it closed above it for two out of three bars. That was really important. Um, and now what we've got is a reverse from the inside track repellent zone. Now, I don't like to do these channels if I don't need to because it just looks messy. I've got moving averages that do the same thing. So let me just do this. I'll take the pink one. I'll go click. That's nice. Trade station has this nice, easy way of doing things. There. So that just says we're okay. If at any point in the next week or two, the S&P takes out this particular, it depends when, of course, because it's a rising trend line, 5530. But if there's a close under 55, let's call it 55500. At any point, I think we, we have more than just a daily uh, timeout. I think it's going to impact the weekly chart as well. Okay. Upside right now has very strong resistance right there at about 55, ah, let's call it 5,600, right? So you've got 5,500 base and 5,600 resistance. Let's go to the IWM. Uh, let's go to the QQQ. Index 100, big move down, almost taking out the low of the 25th, I think it was. There it is. Uh, the 1st of June, uh, July, 1st of July of 476.26. Delays low so far is 477.99. Now, I know that we have a couple of people who have puts. Uh, I had a question yesterday, uh, an email from one of our one of our subscribers, wanting to know where I thought the QQQ would be. And I said it was really important in the QQQ to take out the 482 level yesterday. Well, it went under it. Uh, did it close under it? I think it did just barely. It went to 481.70 on a close, uh, 481.77, and today it's down and accelerating lower. So I think uh, you're going to be able to get out of your puts very nicely. Congratulations. IWM, this is now pulling back, and it's finally gone negative today, minus 69, a 2 to 1.55. We are long, and we are long, I would say long and strong, but that's a little bit, uh, that's hubris. That's just asking for trouble. I'd say long. Not long enough, and we want to add to the position because I think there's a lot of a suggestion here that the small caps are finding favor, but not if there's intense selling in the semis, etc., because that money takes a little while to come out, and then to be redeployed, it takes a little while. So it's in the area that says fabulous leg D, leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. That's where you've got to be a little bit careful. So we're looking at um, we're looking at the uh, IWM on watch because if it takes out 219 on a closing basis, it means that maybe there's going to be a little bit more of a dip. We could even see the test of the breakout of the peak that was made in the weekly chart, the Russell 2000, uh, 211.88 on the 20, the week of the 29th of March. Uh, what did I say? 2.11. And we were at 2.20 or 10 points down. Nah, I don't want to see that. But we, we, we have a plan to add to it as part of a, an overall uh, perspective on what's going on in the market and the rotational aspect. Next thing we're looking at is XLK. That was taking a dive. Um, now here again, I don't know about this peak C. It looks to me like if we have a pullback here, uh, 
I'm keeping it as a peak C. There's no other way I can notate this. But what I am saying is it would imply to fail, it goes underneath 192.04, the low of the week of the 19th of April. And this is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. It could do that, but that'll be a pretty lousy move. And look, this is the S&P Tech Spider Fund. Look at that trend line, monthly trend line. Oh, I need to show this. Very important. Look, that's your very long term from the low of 2015, and that's at uh, 31.32. So we've already gone <clears throat> to this trend line resistance, 177.04, back in December of 2021, peak D, then a pullback. And lo and behold, 238.14 was the high this month, just a couple of days ago. And we've hit that trend line. Oh, I'm going to keep this up. Have a look at this while I'm on the break. Look at the S&P, a very long term on the 666 low of March the 9th. 2009. Look where we went. Inside factory balancer. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman singing for Steve Rhodes' uh, Greatest Edge Hour. And I did my show, and I'm doing this show. And don't forget, I have a webinar coming up on Tuesday for subscribers to my opening call on what should work, what, 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 what is starting to look good, what are the laggards that could lead the market up um, in the sectors coming up in the next few weeks, and what is really uh, needs to take a breather. And we've seen that in the SMHs, et cetera, which we've been negative on for a while. So uh, what is this Omega Healthcare in investments inc so that's a question there megapi basil would you please look at ohi i thought you had misspelled uh, oih but it's ohi now i've noticed a number of healthcare stocks especially low priced ones this is fairly low price at 36 i've got uh, one right here that i was looking at of course i now have to remember which the uh, symbol was out of all the symbols i've just written down so this is acting very well. It's a 35.85 OHI up five cents in a market like this. That's telling you a story. So look, I, I like to draw this as a rectangle formation. So I've got webinars on the rectangle. But what I do is I don't go to the upside. Why would I grab 38 something when the price is at 35 when there's a big red candle right here? I'd rather use this and say, okay, if I had the rectangle formation and start to make higher highs and higher lows, uh, I expect at least a peak D just under, right at or just under or just over the previous, that pretty much the major high. I'm not using that right now. I'm using a subsidiary high, the July high. <clears throat> and here we go. So this is an up arrow because the technicals have improved a lot. And you go peak A. This is a monthly chart. I just have a feeling, Magapi, that you're really looking at the longer term. Uh, a, big B, big C, and there is that leg D. If I do a left side, right side price time match, I'm just going to do it visually for now. It takes me to either this month or next month to at least attempt to get to this high right here, this high of, and I'm going to the wick of August of 2021, the high was 37, yeah, 30, I'm sorry, 30, 34.15, I moved it the wrong way. 34.15 uh, was the, and now I can go to that one, which is August, 37.43. No, 37.03, not so easy to read. 37, so I'll put that in here, 37.03, and then I'll draw this line right here, chap with inside wedge, target, repellent line, right there. Yeah, okay, so the way I'm seeing it right now, um, that would be my target for the next month or so. It's at 35.85, it's got about another point and a half to go. It can take a little while, it could do that in a day, it doesn't matter. Look at the weekly chart. I find the most identifiable low. I put an up arrow. I can't put an up arrow. And normally, I start off with a plus sign and has to work its way from a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode. This is already in a buy mode. I can see it just visually. So that's peak A. The next peak is B. Alphabetized sequentially, C, D. And we're in leg E. Could even be a chap wave instant restart because it within three bars, it went from peak D to new leg E. So this could turn into an E slash A, but I don't have to even do that now. But all the technicals are fabulous, but the on-balance volume is saying, whoops, getting a little bit overbought. That's the one indicator that says so. Now, I go to the bottom right here. Yep, that's the bottom. So I put in an up arrow. Let's just do that real quickly. Up arrow. And it's easy. I just count the peaks. But every peak has to be counted from the bottom. So that's an A. Even though this is below that, it's still an A. If there was a little A inside, that would be counted. There is a little A right here. So that's an A, but then there's a B. Not there. Here, that's the B. That means the next high is not a B. It's a C because you start from this low right here. A, lower A, lower A, a B, and here's your C, right? So there's your C. And then what does it do? It goes to a D. And then each time it makes these peaks, it has a pretty darn sharp pullback. Wow, if you got in, if you had a stop, you'd keep getting stopped out. And in the end, it still keeps going higher. So that's a peak D. And then it pulls back 
and by the uh, unbalanced volume and the stochastic, and it looks like that's a brand new A, B, C, and now you've got yourself a D. So there you are. That's the way I'd analyze it, and I'm just saying to you, this is acting very well. It's a, it's a tad overbought on a purely technical basis. Let me just do this. Um, oh, sorry, I should say it's a tad overbought on a purely visual basis. If you're using the nine-period exponential moving average, the blue line, as your gauge, and that's my only gauge that I use, is very overbought or very oversold. I do use relative strength, but in a different way, and the relative strength right now is running sharply. It hasn't gone over... Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. It hasn't gone pink. should be pink. Oh, maybe it has. Okay, relative strength is um, a, a little overboard as well. So I'm anticipating that at 35, uh, 86, looking out, you've got a higher, higher prices going into the end of August. It should try for the 37s. It's a 3585. Most importantly, you've got this key support at 34.97 and 34.58. Just for fun, let's go to my automated OHI. My automated OHI, this is daily, weekly, monthly, and 120-minute charts. And it says we broke the automated resistance at 35.13. It's gone higher. That becomes very near-term support. It has nothing in the weekly chart, and it has 36.43 in the monthly chart. It's broken above the 34.68 level, and it has an ultimate goal in the 45.72 area. I don't do that. I do one step at a time. The whole, all of the stuff here in the 37s, maybe 38 area, that's really your big, big resistance. So it's acting very well, and you can see in the 120-minute chart, doesn't have anything. Hey, what happened here? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh oh, what did I? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it just didn't have any support resistance levels. I just wanted to talk about GE for a moment. G, so I hope that helps you on OHI. Uh, Robinhood 2. We'll do Robinhood. All right, so uh, GE has been my benchmark to say if GE starts to slow down, its upward move, it's in a digestive phase. Well, it's been like that since. Uh, that goes back to May, May, June, and so for all of July. It's just been between 169 and 152. Sideways action, digesting huge gain. Oh, no. So uh, we've got a break coming up. This is Basil Chapman sitting in for uh, the one and only Steve Rhodes, Trader's Edge. And I'll be right back down to 174. SP's down to You're right. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And we're looking at uh, 23.66 down 52. Now, this has been a question for me for the last few days since we do not have, and I've been talking about it for ages, and we just keep missing, not we, I keep missing getting into it. Now we have to wait a little while longer. I thought before that the Bitcoin pullback would uh, impact Robinhood much more. Uh, but I think that it's the mix of the uh, Bitcoin and gold, uh, the gold market itself, that it's really helping to keep it buoyant. So uh, you can see, yes, Bitcoin, since it made that peak F top in the 75,000s, uh, back in May, it's just been going to lower lows and lower highs. And even now with this big rally that we've seen, the nine period moving has has crossed positive. So I'm really watching this closely because there is a chance that there's another big move up before it hits resistance. A big move meaning going from the 64,000 level, maybe to maybe into the 68 to 69,000 and then maybe running out of steam. I don't know, but the monthly chart says that it should still go to a leg D, higher highs to all-time high sometime in 2024. Anyway, so that's the reason why we held up, uh, held off a little bit in hood, but I should not have done that. I should have started an entry and we could always add to it. So I do like it, but look at the way the 200 period moving average for seven weeks has been the magnet. It cannot break away from it. Can't break down, but it doesn't want to break away yet. And I suspect it will at some point. I think that it is uh, 85 was a round number high. I always look at round numbers. As you know, I just saw the round number in the Dow uh, for the high. Uh, all time high has just made a round number to point zero zero. I mean, give me a break. How often do you see that? Very seldom. 85 round number high on August of 2021 comes down to six dollars and 81 cents. I say 90% correction is a bit of a correction, but it's had a fantastic gain. Uh, we have some dinners, one particular who started uh, getting into Robin Hood way down, I believe in the single digits. Great move. So now what we're looking at leg D in the monthly chart, leg G stash C in the weekly chart at the 200 period moving average. So it hasn't broken down. All I can say is it makes higher highs and higher lows, and that makes it very um, difficult because even if it broke under 23, it says, you know what, it could come all the way back to the retest of 21s. If it holds really well, yeah, it says, oh, you know, I can still pop to a peak D, and then I could sort of pull back. So uh, it's tough because I like to put them all together. If you look at Schwab, look at that move to the downside in Schwab at a peak D. Remember, peak D is where other things can happen in the daily chart. That's peak D. But look, peak E in the weekly, more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. In the weekly, it's gone way through the 200-period moving average. So everything's different. And that's the, 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 that, that I want you to point out, 
that we're seeing that even in the um, XLF, remember chart to chart, and I'm just saying here's a chart, XLF all-time high, even as we speak today at 44.10. But the KRE in the banking sector, but different banking sector, this is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, which is in the money center banks. But the regional banks have been horrible recovery high today. But look at the chart. 78.81 was the all-time high back in January 2022. Plummets down to the 34s, and now it is having a pretty decent rally. So the IAI, which we've been long since the day after the low way back in uh, uh, March of 2022, and 45 is up at 123, but I want to pull back here. Yeah, I want to get more into the uh, into the brokers because I think that the next big move up in the market is going to it's going to embrace the uh, the public is going to come in and those those brokers all over the show are going to do very well. Okay, so Hood, I'm saying to you, uh, you just want to do you mentioned it, Robin Hood too. Yeah, Robin Hood. I don't know if this is a an F because it didn't take out the initial starting point of 16.22. Uh, May the 10th for Robin Hood. Um, so that's still an act of E that could be an F. I'm going to do that. I have no choice. I need to be. I need to know in my mind that there's an alternate count. Therefore, it's a little bit vulnerable, both down and up. And the next few days are going to be very important. So it's down today, 51 cents, not a big deal, 23.67. <clears throat> and I've got an alternate count in the weekly chart. So my my outlook here is that this ugly candle, the, the real start of the big down move for the ugly candle from that long-legged Chapman Wave inverted Roman candle, almost a butterfly pattern actually, uh, from August of 2021, <clears throat> not the doji candle, but the next candle, that is, my, that is my target for 2024. That goes from the 33s to the 43s. And we're not even in, we're not even in the 30s, we're at 23. So if I'm correct, at some point later in the year, we'll get an acceleration. You've got to, I, I just have patience. If you're wanting to, if you aren't in, you want to get in, just have patience. You'll, you'll, you'll get in. Um, and you might have to do it in two stages. On the next pullback, you get in, and then you say, in case there's another big dip under 21, I've got another entry point, and that's maybe the way you have to do it. Um, let me just see here. Got questions there. Yeah, I have that. Uh, OHI is a healthcare REIT. Yeah, you know, I've kind of avoided the REITs only because there's some there's some kind of tax implications. It's not a big deal. Shouldn't avoid something just because there's a little bit of a tax implication. But if you can, I, I've done that. You know, like UNH, um, UNH, United Healthcare. Look at that move. It's done. It's done nothing. It's almost like the IWM. It did nothing for a month month and a half, just stuck at the 200 period moving average, and then whoosh. So this is your low, that becomes A, that becomes A, that's another A, that's a B, an overlapping B says you should go higher. It's like a restart in the Chapman Wing methodology, and lo and behold, it goes strongly to B, and that's a C in the monthly all-time high, um, A, B. That could even be just a B in the monthly chart, United Health. And they always seem to be making money. Amazing, health. Healthcare, right? Um, all right. So that, but it's not a REIT. You know, I don't believe in the United Health is. Okay. So, a couple of things I wanted to do. I had a question here. Yeah. So, uh, um, Steve usually says if the VIX is over, I think on a closing basis, closes over 10%. Then you can expect something a little different the following session. I believe that's what he actually. I shouldn't have said that because I, off the top of my head, I think that's what he said. But I, I just don't feel 100% comfortable that I should have said that. But that's kind of what he says. Um, all right, so let's, let's let's skip that. I didn't I didn't say anything. Um, we've got a question coming in. Where did it go? Where did it go? So I said I'm looking at the different sectors. So look, IBB. Oh, I meant to do that. Um, IBB, I spoke about what I'm looking at as a potential glut in the uh, biotech area, here in the Boston area, that is overbuilding, way, way overbuilding. And I'm now seeing it, and there was an article yesterday uh, in the Globe. I must cut it out to put it together with my webinar from, I think it was March of this year, where I was talking about it. 
And you can see that um, it's been a bit of a struggle, but yes, IBB, NASDAQ, Biotech has gone higher. The BBH and the BB, oh, have I lost? Yep, I lost the notation once again. It's just gone sideways and only lately has it broken to the upside. So I'm watching this closely because sometimes the real estate market tells you a lot about a sector. So we'll see if there's going to be a glut and that the biotech start to pull back because of other reasons, mostly financial. I'll be back in a moment. Final section. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Folks, as we wrap up the segment uh, of Steve's show, I hope Steve's going to be well and back tomorrow. Uh, we've got Caterpillar, and this is the reason why I'm saying to you it's a bifurcated market. What's working is really working. Look at this. Caterpillar, look at this move. In a week and a half, it's gone from the 320s to today's high of 369. That is remarkable, right? And look at the weekly chart, how it's improving. And that's what I'm saying. Don't just get blinded to everything. It's a bifurcated market. What's working is what you want to stay with. <clears throat> and that's what I'll be uh, working towards for my uh, opening call, subscriber, webinar coming up Tuesday. Sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market. I call it the next phase because I believe that the semis, the QQQ, XLK, they're going to take a breather. And I demonstrated that with the techniques that I have. Uh, we're also looking, this will be archived Tuesday, July the 23rd, 4 o'clock to 5.30. Most importantly, look at this technique. <clears throat> look, here's Microsoft. I discussed this for weeks. I've been talking about it. There's a particular pattern. Stalk leg formation, a long leg up, weekly chart, long leg up, <clears throat> oval pattern. That's the leg, body, the neck. 
and this is the beak on the way down. And the beak has a target after hitting 468.15, <clears throat> has a target of four right here, 433.60 to 431.60. Where are we today? We're at 434.72, right as we speak. Actually, as we speak, we're at 435.31 on its way to test the oval pattern. So these are techniques I'll be talking about and how you how can use them, what they mean. We have one right here, CDE. This is a daily chart. It's the same thing. There's a stalk leg formation. Went to the neck. Now it's coming back for the beak. Uh, will it test the 605 arch, arch level? Or this is the oval of the pattern. This is a stalk leg formation. Let me just squeeze this. So these are techniques that we are long, been long for a little while. So yes, within that context, these are all the things that we'll be doing. And um, stay tuned. Great programming coming up. And of course, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And of course, the, the, the video coming up um, on Tuesday. Oh, the video is tomorrow night. I do an overview. It'll be an hour long. It'll be preparatory to the webinar coming up. This is all part of what I like to look at in what's working and what's not working. Have a great day. And thank you for being here.